class viewers. This is another session under differential equations. Now, we are still looking at formation of differential equations. So this is a continuation class. So if you are new in this page, please do consider to subscribe to this YouTube channel and ensure that you do not skip any part of this video for you to get the full dose of the impartation that we are going to be releasing during the course of this training. Now guys, we will start from the very point where we stop. Now at this point, we are asked to form a differential equation from the function y is equal to x plus a all over x. Mm. And now, this happens to be question number two. So we put down our solution. And we put down our solution. Then we have y is equal to x plus a over x. Now, guys, what happens if I decide to analyze this and find out the arbitrary constant here? Now, in this function, we have three variables, x, y, and a. Of course, there is no need for us to start uh, wasting our time. We already know the arbitrary constant here, which happens to be a, right? Now, in this function, can you identify how many arbitrary constants that we have here? We have just one arbitrary constant, so we therefore have where a is an arbitrary constant. So guys, what do you do here? Like I explained in the previous class, when you have one arbitrary constant, these are conditions, boundary conditions, right? When you have one arbitrary constant, you differentiate once. Then, make the arbitrary constant subject of formula, substitute, simplify, you are done. So, with or without wasting our time, we already know that this function here will land us in first order differential equation. Why? Because we have one arbitrary constant, which will make us to differentiate this function only once. Then, we, we, before we can differentiate this function, we have to make this function a linear function because this is a fraction. This aspect of this function is a fraction and we do not want it to appear in fractional form. So let's make it linear so that it will be easy for us to differentiate. For some of us that are, in, that are what? Just what? For some of us that are not strong in mathematics yet, right? You are going to be very strong if you keep following us. Now, look at it. I'm going to have y is equal to x plus ax raised to power minus 1. How did I get this as x raised to power minus 1? I made use of the fourth law of indices. Now, in indices, we were told that if x raised to the power of minus a, that is exactly as 1 over x raised to power. I hope you can still remember this in indices, yes. So, if you can remember this, that is to say, if I have s raised to power minus 1 is the same thing as s raised to power what? s raised to power 1, which this can be what? Ignore. So I reverse this to this form so that it will be easy for me to differentiate. Now, if this is understood, therefore the next thing we are going to do now is to differentiate the y, y with respect to x. So we have the y over the x. Guys, if you differentiate x with respect to x, you have 1. And now, plus, if you differentiate a x raised to power minus 1, you are going to have, first of all, what you do is to bring down the power. So you are going to have minus 1 a x raised to power minus 1. Now, what do you do? You must remove 1 from the original power. No, this is not differentiation. It's application of differentiation, right? So, we are not supposed to be saying everything here. Alright, now, so what we do is, first of all, you bring down the power which is minus 1, we put down minus, ignoring the 1. Then I put down a, put down s, put down the original power. Now I'll reduce the power by 1. That's what differentiation is all about. So I'll now say here, minus 1. So automatically, I'm going to have the y over the x is equal to 1 minus a x raised to power minus 2. It's as simple as this. And guys, this is equivalent. Okay, let me put it there. This is equivalent to what? 1 minus a over x squared. This I will call equation 1. Alright? Yes. Don't forget that this is still the y over the x. Now, I have differentiated this function and I just had one equation. Now, I don't need to differentiate again. Why? Because I have an arbitrary constant. This is what gives me 
a, a stand to what to do, all right? So with this one arbitrary constant, I know that I'm differentiating this function only once. Hope that is taken. Now the next thing I'm quickly going to do is to come back to the given equation and make the arbitrary constant the subject of formula. Then we can substitute. So we can come back to this equation now and say, from the given equation, y is equal to x plus a over x, we can make a the subject of formula. How do we do that? We first of all take x, we are going to have y minus s. As s crosses the sign of the equality, it turns to minus s. Is equal to what a open bracket, sorry, a over what x. Now, at this point, since I am looking for a, all I need to do is to cross multiply so that I can make a the sort of formula. And by so doing, we are going to have that a is equal to x times y minus x. This will give us xy minus x squared when we open the bracket x times y, xy, and x times minus x we have minus x squared. So we will quickly call this one equation 2. Now that we have made the arbitrary constant, the subject of formula, all we just need to do is to substitute this into equation 1 where we obtain our derivative. Are you there? Yes. So all we just need to do now is to come here. Anywhere you see a, put the value of a. And that, guys, so we just simply say substitute Substitute equation 2 into equation 1. This is what we are talking about. So now what is equation 1? This is the y over the x is equal to 1 minus. Now understand that guys, this equation can be is equal to what? 1 minus a over x. And now guys, what is a? A is x, y minus x squared all over x squared. This is our a, guys. What just happened here is at the numerator here, we have a to be x, y minus x squared. So I just replaced the numerator by the value of a, which is in terms of x. And why? Because we said the essence of form formulating the a differential equation is to eliminate the arbitrary constant. So that's the reason why you must substitute for the arbitrary constant, having made it the subject of formula in terms of the other two variables, which is the dependent and the independent variable. Hope that is taken. Now, all we need to do here now is to simplify. From what we have here, guys, we have already eliminated the arbitrary constant that was given to us in this question. Of course, in this question, we have three variables, but here now, we have two variables. That shows that we are making progress. We are close to the promised line. Now, we are at a point we have Moses to see the promised land but never enter. So some people can still make mistakes here and never get the right answer. Why? If you don't understand the concept of opening brackets or maybe uh, eliminating fraction, you can also have issues here. But now, follow me. In as much as you are with us, we, you don't have any issue. You are covered. Now, let's go. We therefore have that dy. We want to simplify this. So this is over 1, guys. I'm going to have dy over dx. Is equal to now the LCM of one and x, guys. The LCM of one and x squared is x squared. So I simply just put that x squared and put that my fractional form. So now one divided x squared divided by one is x squared, and x squared times one is x squared. So you put down the x squared, then minus x squared divided by x squared is one. So put that one times. I'm going to have x y minus x squared. It's as simple as this. So first is to find the LCM of the denominator, which happens to be x squared. Next is to divide the new denominator, x squared, by 1, and whatever you have. Use it to multiply the numerator here. And 1 times x squared gives us x squared. Then this minus is this. Then open the bracket. This x squared divided by x squared is 1. So 1 times this numerator still remains the same. Now all we need to do now is to remove the bracket. Now, how do we remove the bracket? This will have given us dy over dx is equal to x squared minus minus times x squared. Minus times xy, we are going to have minus xy. And minus times minus x squared, we are going to have plus x squared over x squared. It's as simple as this. 
is as simple as this. Okay, the next thing we do is that this is x squared, and this is another plus x squared. That means I can sum up the two x squared. Hence, we are going to have the y over the x is equal to 2x squared minus xy over x squared. Yeah. At this very point, all we just need to do is to factorize, and this will have given us x open bracket 2x minus y all over what? x times x. This is what we don't need now. All I did here is x, this is 2x squared, and this is xy. S is common, so bring that s and factorize. When you factorize, the denominator is x squared, which happens to be x times x. Now, this we take care of this. Then finally, what we have that is we're going to have the y over the x is equal to 2x minus y over x. Finally, guys, all we just need to do here is to make this equation a linear equation. We don't want it to be in fractional form. Of course, you can stop here, you can leave it here, but I don't want to leave it here. I want you to take one step further. And how do I take that first step further? How do I take the next step? I just cross multiply. I'm going to have x dy over dx is equal to 2x minus y. This is my equation. All I just did is to use this x and denominator to come and multiply the y over the x. And I have this as my outcome. Now, from what we have here now, we have successfully eliminated the arbitrary constant we have which to be a, and now we have just the y over the s, which shows that this question is first order differential equation. Oh, this is clear, yes. Now, for some students that are doing CBT, what you might be asked to do here is to identify, show that this equation is first order or second order. So you will now have option A, B, none of the above, all of the above, then A first order, B second order. So what you are interested in is not just to have this answer. When you get the answer, you should be able to know whether your answer is first order, second order, or third order. Because for YX student, for, for OBJ student, the interest of the examiner may just be that you should identify the type of order that can be obtained from this portion. Now, for objective students, like I said, you don't need to solve. If you are asked to find the order of differential equation for any given function, for you to get the answer without solving, all you just need to do is to just identify the number of arbitrary constant. The number of arbitrary constant that is present in the given function is equivalent to what the degree of the order of the differential equation. That is taking this is the wise master definition. So the number of arbitrary constant that you have in a given function is exactly the same as what the resulting number of differential equation. I'll see you guys in question number three. Please, if you are not subscribed to this.